It's also known as American trypanosomiasis. Pathogen is a protozoan called trypanosome, trypanosoma cruci, a flagellated uh, protozoan, and it occurs in <coughs> Texas, Mexico, Central America, South America. I had an entomology teacher that uh, down in South America is entomology, which is bug uh, heaven. And uh, the entomology teacher would take trips down to South America. And he came down with Chagas disease. Yeah, when he was down there. Um, uh, the reservoir are wild animals like rodents or possums or armadillos. But we have this up in uh, Texas, in the southern area there as well. Uh, the arthropod vector, the one that takes the protozoa to you, is the reduvid bug, also known as the kissing bug. And that's because it bites you near your lips. And uh, the trypanosome grow in the gut of the bud. And so when the bug bites you, then it, uh, oops. And then the the um, the protozoa is in the feces, and it gets rubbed into the bite, or you might scratch it and get it on your hands and rub your eyes and get into wounds at your eyes. Uh, blood transfusions are another way <coughs> that it gets transmitted, but now they've started checking for it in blood banks with uh, protozoa. Cause nerve damage, controlling a parasolic action of the esophagus <coughs> and the colon, and it can result in what's known as a mega colon or mega esophagus. esophagus. You should go online and look this up. It's a huge. So what happens is then they are not able to transport the food like they should. <clears throat> Of course, they're all out of the individuals that have them, but they show you pictures of these mega colons and mega esophagus. There's a picture of the reduvid bug, the kissing bug. And here we have somebody that's donating their arm again. This is something that transports that protozoan. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, yeah. All that hair. <laughs> oh, you think it's a mouth? No, you said it has to be on. They, <laughs> Yeah, they bite near the mouth. They might be going after that saliva. Ew. Well, that's why they call them the kissing bug, because their bites are up here. Um, uh, toxoplasmosis is another disease. The pathogen is Toxoplasma gondii. And it is a spore forming protozoan. Cats are the definitive host. Means that uh, uh, the adult form or the sexual phase is there in the definitive host. And uh, the protozoa undergoes the sexual phase in the intestinal tract of the cat. And then the oocysts are shed in the cat's feces. And it's ingested by an intermediate host, such as a mouse or cow or pig or a human. That would be easy to do because if these are in cat feces and you're changing the cat box, if you don't get those hands washed good, and maybe you bite your sandwich, your little uh, <laughs> hangnail like I've been doing all day. That's why you just don't have cats. Gross. <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> that is my baby. <laughs> it's an asymptomatic <laughs> infection in most people, mm -hmm. but in a non-immune pregnant woman, it can lead to congenital toxoplasmosis. So the uh, fetus 
can be a stillborn, meaning the baby's going to be born dead. And if the baby is viable, that uh, child can have severe brain damage or vision problem. And I, I think I told you this before, but my daughter has cats, and when she got pregnant, she had them all tested for this. <clears throat> but otherwise, pregnant women shouldn't be changing litter boxes. And there, this um, pathogen also causes uh, California fatal encephalitis of sea otters. Mm -hmm. And what was happening is people were flushing their litter boxes down the toilet, and then it goes uh, out to sea eventually. And um, these uh, sea otters were ingesting the, these uh, protozoans causing an encephalitis, a fatal encephalitis. Here's a picture of the protozoa, Toxoplasmosis gondii. Uh, malaria, we've talked about malaria before, so this is just a recap for you. The pathogen is a plasmodium, protozoan parasite. The vector is the female Anopheles mosquito. And we had a lot of malaria when they were building the Panama Canal. <clears throat> but now they're, and then, you know, they treat things now and treat for mosquitoes and stuff, so we don't have that much malaria here anyway. But now there is a resurgence of malaria, including in the United States. So uh, 300 to 500 million are affected worldwide and two to four million die from malaria annually. <clears throat> it is a problem. <clears throat> there are four types of plasmodium that can cause malaria. Uh, the most dangerous is plasmodium falciparum, but it's pl plasmodium bivax. Uh, plasmodium ovale and plasmodium malaria. Virulence factor is there multiple life stages for this uh, protozoan. Remember that uh, in the mosquito, that asexual sporocyte is in the saliva of the mosquito. <clears throat> and so when the mosquito bites some animal or a human, then those sporozoites are in the saliva and they um, get injected into the host that gets uh, bitten. So if it's a human, the let's talk about a human, sporozoites then enter a capillary. And then those sporozoites uh, make their way through with, in the blood to the liver cells. So they're in there within 30 minutes of the bite. And then they go through that uh, schizogony, which is a multiple asexual division. And they develop into large numbers of merozoites. And uh, these merozoites get released into the circulation. And then they enter the dead blood cells. And there they also go through uh, schizogony and make more merozoites. <clears throat> So if you have in one red blood cell uh, merozoites that are replicating, 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 pretty soon they're going to burst that red blood cell and then they get liberated and then they can go out and infect new red blood cells. So the initial infection is marked, if you were looking at the blood under a microscope, by what's called a ring trophozoite. You have a picture of it in your book, but it, it, it is a, looks like a ring with a little bowl where maybe a diamond would be. And uh, your book has a better picture than what I do. I mean, to show you that really ringy trophozoa. <clears throat> so that's what we're looking for in the blood at the beginning. So there's the red blood cells. And <clears throat> let me see a good one. You can see the ring structure really good ones with the little maybe maybe that's not 
<laughs> so look in your book so that you can see what that looks like. So um, we already said that those uh, the, those Amerozoites kept replicating to Sky Sagani, and then they burst out of the red blood cells and go out to infect more red blood cells. And when these Amerozoites are released, so are some toxic uh, compounds, and that's what's actually causing the characteristic uh, fever and chills of malaria. And those toxic compounds, and they're time to whenever those uh, cells burst. So there's a picture of a red blood cell. Here, this one has, looks like it has one merozoite left in it. Up here, you can see many of them. And they just keep replicating and replicating until they cause the red blood cells to burst. And um, in certain, some of those red blood cells, most of them are being to, um, uh, dividing into uh,